Hello and welcome to another CamCloud IP camera review. Today we'll be reviewing one of D-Link's outdoor cameras, the D-Link DCS2332L. I'll be reviewing the camera's hardware and video quality, the My D-Link service, and its monitoring features. Now this camera didn't really feel like an outdoor camera. It has a very sturdy design and a good weight to the device, but it really comes across as an indoor camera. But it is rated for outdoor use which means it's protected from dust and moisture. Compared to other outdoor cameras, this camera is more appropriate for somewhat protected outdoor applications rather than a full-blown outdoor camera that's exposed to some rain or a lot of direct sunlight. As for the camera's video quality, the camera produces a quality 720p video feed. In our tests, we've never had any issues with its video quality or its general stability. Now let's talk about the My D-Link service. The service is offered with D-Link cameras and allows for a somewhat plug-and-play setup and remote access to the camera over the web. D-Link markets this as a cloud service. To us, this is a bit misleading. There aren't any substantial cloud functions offered by the service that we could see. It's mostly remote access to the camera from the web rather than offering integrated services in the cloud. An example of a cloud service would be something that allows you to store your videos in the cloud off-site. From here, your options are to either continue with the MyDLink setup or just jump to the camera's IP address in your browser and configure the settings directly in the camera. You can also access the camera's local SD card remotely as well if you'd want to do that. The basic problem with MyDLink is it's marketing itself as a plug and play service on a camera that's not really plug and play. The motion detection settings were also quite limited from the MyDLink service, so I just didn't see the benefit of using it. You basically need to pick one approach for managing your cameras, either using the MyDLink service or configuring the camera directly. In the end, I ended up selecting Remove Device from the Settings menu and decided not to use this feature. Lastly, let's talk about its monitoring features. Setting up motion detection on a D-Link can be a bit confusing at first. You need to configure several separate settings, the server, the media, the event, and the motion detection settings. Now D-Link does offer a setup wizard that sets most of this up for you, so it's not a bad way to get your initial settings configured, then go in and refine each setting individually. Still, if you're going to be a D-Link user, I recommend getting to know these settings and what they mean so you can configure things the way you want. Unfortunately, all of these steps are easy to miss, so I think D-Link could have made this a lot more intuitive. Once you get over the learning curve, there's a lot of flexibility built into the camera to configure its settings and meet your needs. The video recording has a nice pre-buffer feature and you can record for up to 100 seconds, and it generates great video which it will upload to a remote FTP server. I've set up the service with CamCloud to store all my recordings in the cloud instead of a micro SD card. Overall, despite the rough setup, this is a good IP camera. Its video quality is good and the device is reliable and pretty sturdy. You can find less expensive H.264 cameras, so I would still recommend shopping around. The only thing to be aware of with these cameras is whether you want to use the My D-Link service. Make a decision early on whether you want to use the service or just configure the camera yourself. And if you decided you need cloud storage, you can try out the CamCloud service for free. If you're having trouble setting up your camera, I've put up a setup guide in the link below. And for more IP camera reviews, head on to blog.camcloud.com. Until next time.